In the words of the great Jim Salisbury, you can't make this bleep up. The go. Phillies, uh, I, I, get, I wish it would sound better if you made it up, or maybe not. Ricky Vitalico, Ben Davis, I'm Michael Barkan. I just keep thinking, oh, we don't have the time to wait anymore. You were in your 30s when they won the World Series. You were 12 when they won the World <laughs> Series. I was 48, for goodness sakes. And we keep going year after year after year after year, and no chance of getting to the World Series. It's pathetic. But what's really pathetic is to watch the way they play and the way they are managed, because they should be qualified to win these games. You saw Nick Castellanos there. The guy's batting like 140 in his past 12 games. Doesn't have a home run or a run batted in in his last now 11 games. Ricky Bo, we're, we're Ben go, Davis, go ahead. We're going right back to expectations. Our our expectations for this team was very, very high. They are not anywhere near anybody's expectations that watches this team right now. And quite frankly, that bullpen is not going to get you anywhere near a playoff run. I'm sorry to say this, but I look at this bullpen. They don't have the guns out there. They have a couple that could get the job done, and the rest of them, you can't. Let me put it this way. You can't, you can't play dice with your bullpen guys and say, oh, well, you know, one out of three, he's going to be all right. No, you can't play like that. You have a guy out there, Corey Knable, who you could, you, you could respect. You could take him out there. Go, go ahead. Name guys. Alvarado, no. No, no. Sir Anthony, Anthony, apparently, you know, he was a little sore now. I I mean, these are issues that are going to go on forever. I don't like the way the bullpen is made up right now. And the the way Joe Girardi runs it is not good either. So I'm a little disgusted with the way this team's playing right now. I think we all are. We thought they might be on a run, Ben, when they came down to Atlanta. They took that first game. Now they're going to struggle to try to get a split with the Braves. And the Braves don't look that great, let me tell you. No, they do not. There's a couple things that really scratch my head about. I'm looking at, at, at Boehm, Segor, and Harper, really just the three dependable guys in this lineup currently, and I hope these other guys start to get it going right now, but they're the only three guys that I see that really, I, I guess the other guys are playing hard as well, but these are the guys that I see sticking their nose in it. Those three guys are sticking their nose in it, and I'm loving what I'm seeing out of these guys, not giving up any at-bats, coming through in the clutch. But these other guys, I don't know. And I feel bad because we know about the great ownership group here in Philadelphia with the Phillies. It's a great ownership. They went above and beyond to bring these guys in. And I I know it's mid-40s game into it, but you may think, are they having buyer's remorse right now because they're not producing? I I am. bad for them because they they stuck their necks out there and they're not getting the rewards on their their capital. I will say this much. I mean, they bought Bryce Harper, and he is the total package. He is unbelievable. Mm -hmm. I mean, there are certain guys that that you could see in their eyes, you could see in their faces that want it. Bryce Harper hit that home home run last night. How fired up was he? He felt like he just lit a spark underneath the ball club. Well, he is one of the guys that, that continues to light a spark. Without him, think about where they'd be right now. Nowhere. Yeah. Well, they would be uh, non existent at this point. A, a miss, what do they say? Uh, close is only counts in horseshoes and hand, hand grenades. A miss as good as a mile. Let's go down south. Check in in Atlanta with Ruben Amaro Jr. Ruben, don't let us sway you, Ruben. We're in a good mood, <laughs> despite what our sentiment might indicate. No, we're not. We're really not, Ruben. What would you make of, of this one, the way they went down tonight, and the way the bullpen was managed in particular? Well, it felt like a little bit of a hangover from the from the tough loss last night, and, and it didn't help when Ranger Suarez wasn't really very sharp. And I am concerned about the fact that He's just not throwing consistent strikes like he was last year. Now, last year was a, a, a tremendous year for him, both in the bullpen and as a starter. But um, for whatever reason, he is just me- either mechanically or mentally, he's not able to throw his, uh, use the, you know, both sides of the plates uh, consistently. And, uh, and, you know, he just hasn't pitched uh, particularly well as of late. And, and it was just a sloppy baseball game. I mean, this was not... You're not a game that you, that you want to highlight very very much, and you know the, the Phillies have to just play much cleaner baseball. This is not the kind of game that uh, that you want to play, especially when you're down here in Atlanta and you're and you're trying to battle. And I and I do believe that there's a little bit of a hangover over that tough loss last night. You might be right. Suarez, by the way, last three starts, 11 earned runs allowed, and an ERA, Ricky Bo, of 6.91. Go ahead. Yeah, I mean, for me, it's it's, it's for me, it's a, it's about the walks and 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 not throwing you know consistent strikes. 
you know, the, the more the more walks and the more free passes, the more difficult it makes, and uh, and that's not his mo, and, and and that surprises me a little bit. Starting with we've been talking great stuff about Bryce Harper. Starting with Bryce Harper tries to stretch a single into a double when it wasn't even close to being hit deep enough to do that, and and that kind of started it off. Uh, again, he was out by 30 feet. I understand he's trying to do as much as he possibly can to help this ball club, but that wasn't helping anybody. I mean, the ball's in front of you. You see where it is, and you still decide to go for second base on that one. Not a good play. Just, I mean, there's no other way to put this. I'm not going to sit here and tell you, well, he was hustling. No, that's a bunch of garbage. It was just a really bad play on his part. Yeah. All right. It was 111 off the bat. 111 off the bat, and it wasn't to right center. I mean, it was pretty much straight away right field, maybe a little bit to right center. But, again, like Ricky said, the play's right in front of you. You're not invisible out there. So, it, that can't happen. You got a runner at third base in Bohm with less than two outs, and Castellanos up. You know, you got you to gotta leave him there. there. There's a question. I don't know whether it will be asked of Joe Girardi. We talked about it last night. Girardi was asked last night about Jose Alvarado. Why would you not bring him in? Well, I would have had to bring him in to face righties. He was huh. brought in tonight to face righties, except for Matt Olson. So I find that strange. But we can, uh, we can discuss in a moment. Here's Joe Girardi postgame in Atlanta. You guys battled a little bit in that top of that fifth inning and then gave it away. You gave it away, yeah. Um, Alvin had a hard time throwing strikes. Um, we have the ball miss, you know, the, the throw from JT missed by a couple guys. Um, and then we didn't do much after that offensively. Um, it's unfortunate. What was your take on that crazy play? Everybody missed it. Yeah, I don't. It, 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 it looked like Seggy was trying to be quick with the tag, right? And, and they work on that all the time. And it looked like Oduble just peaked up. And even it looked like maybe Stott had a shot. Yeah, I, I, I think it was probably pretty tough for him. But, yeah, you're right. Some uh, big hits for them tonight with two strikes. It seems like they've had a few big two-strike hits the last couple of nights. Yeah. Um, they got some guys that are hot right now. And, you know, they also have some guys that, you know, struggle a little bit too like us but um, Swanson's been really hot Riley's kind of picked it up um, and they've hurt us and they've hurt us pretty bad El Alvarado I mean he's just so hot and cold uh, you know and he was sp supposed to be a big piece yeah um, he has had his moments where he's been really good and he's had his moments where he struggled and some of it is you know strikes Right um, for him, his stuff can be electric, um, but tonight he really struggled. The, the general, <clears throat> I guess you'd say maybe sloppiness. I mean, you think Castiano misses a cutoff and that hurt because the runner moves up and eventually scores, and then Bryce's daring base running mm -hmm. is that little things add up to, to big results, whether they're good little things or bad little things, right? That that you do, and sometimes they go unnoticed, but. Yeah, I mean, you know, who knows what happens in the first inning, right? Um, you know, there's no guarantee that we score, but obviously first and third with one out is better than a third with two outs. Missing the cutoff man um, probably led to an extra run for them, um, and it makes a big difference. And Suarez is just off. Like. He was all over the place, right? Yeah. He was missing his spots really bad. He worked really hard in the beginning. Um, his last start, I think it was three innings and like 81 pitches. He's just off, right? His command has not been the same as it has been last year, and we got to find a way to get him back on track. Is he one of the one of those guys that you had in mind when you when you talked about Falter and maybe you know coming in as a sixth guy to give a guy a break, maybe give an extra day to somebody? Yeah, I, is he the guy that seemed to? Well, I, I think we're looking at all of them to be honest with you, right? Um, you know, we got two guys coming off COVID, right? F would make four starts in 16 days. Right? That's a lot for a guy coming off COVID. Um, you know, Nola has worked hard. Gibby has worked hard. Um, Wheeler's coming off COVID too, right? So we just felt it was in our best interest for all of them. It looked like Rangers Velo was maybe down a tick. Did you? Since yeah, that, well, I think I think it's because he had to work so hard in the beginning, right? Um, and you throw, I don't know, he threw 30-plus pitches in the second inning, and then he was up to about 60 after, maybe more than that, after three, 65. I mean, 
it's tough when you do it. And in the f second inning, with the, obviously there's a lot of stressful pitches in there too. Joe, come on. Do not baby these guys. They're making millions upon millions of dollars to play baseball, to play hard. Ride them a little bit, for goodness sakes. 